الحمد لله الحمد لله العزيز الأكبر لا راد لما قضى ولا دافع لما قدر وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله الله تعالى بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا وداعيا إلى الله بإذنه وسراجا منيرا فأصلي وأسلم على النبي الأنور وعلى آله أهل بيته الأطهر وصحابته أجمعين يا رب العالمين أما بعد فيقول الله تبارك وتعالى الله الذي خلقكم من ضعف ثم جعل من بعد ضعف قوة ثم جعل من بعد قوة ضعفا وشيبا ويخلق ما يشاء وهو العليم القدير وقال النبي صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم سبعة يظلهم الله يوم لا ظل إلا ظل إلى آخر الحديث أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام. Dear brothers and sisters, we start by praising Allah Tabarak wa Taala. All praise to Him, our Lord, our Creator, our Sustainer. We worship Him alone. We ask Him for His help alone and we ask Him for His forgiveness and guidance on this blessed day of Jum'ah. We ask Him that He send our salutations and our blessings to the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam upon his soul, upon his companions, his pure household and his ummah. Dear brothers and sisters, Allah wa Taala speaks about the system of life and the cycle of the human being. The cycle of stages by which the human being goes through physically within his or her life. That Allah Taala creates you in a state of weakness. And then you move and you move to a state of strength. And then from that strength, once again, you come to a stop. And that stop moves on to a downfall by which you once again return to weakness. That weakness then returns you to the complete state of the state of the possible the uh, ability to leave the world the al mautu tabi'i the natural death by which a person then moves from one realm to another realm from one world to another world to the next world in the state of weakness allah ta'ala created us that we were a fetus we were in the womb we were dependent and in that womb all the necessities of that dependent being that being that cannot do anything by his or herself by their will Allah Ta'ala provides everything within that womb then Allah Ta'ala moves that that being from from the atmosphere of the womb to the atmosphere of the dunya and then Allah Ta'ala allows that being to develop to move forward to strengthen and so that cycle again it goes in this manner that Allah Ta'ala first starts to develop that human being from sickness and from from from, from weakness so from weakness that human being strengthens and then strengthens continues to grow continues to develop until that human being reaches a state within which that development stops and that development now goes back Back to what it was in the beginning. This is why elderliness and being old is compared to childhood in its weakness and dependency. This is what the scholars of the past mentioned, and this is how the ayah frames it as well. And so it's in this cycle that Allah Ta'ala moves the human being, allows the human being to grow and to develop. The difference between the beginning and the end, the beginning and the end are very similar. Weakness in the beginning, weakness in the end. The middle is the important part. That's known as the age of uwa, the age of power, the age of strength. Right? And the ulama, when they do tafsir generally of the ayah, they reference it to be the age of youth, which within Islam goes from the age of approximately 15 to 40. Because in that age, the human being is continually, continuously developing, growing, strengthening. After that, there's a hold on its development, a pause. And then that human being now starts to have a downfall. 
this human being physically, emotionally, spiritually within this stage of youth is when this human being grows. And Allah Ta'ala's Messenger وسلم, told us of the virtue of this age, how important this age is. And He told us that there are seven people on the day of resurrection whom will have no stress, they will have the protection of the throne of Allah. They will have the shade of the throne of Allah. They will be protected from the heat of the sun which will be made just a mile away. From those seven people, one person, very famous hadith, one of those people is Shabun Nasha'a fi ibadatillah. A young person who is nurtured and grows in the worship of Allah. And this is a very blessed state. Youth being a young person, this is without a doubt a very blessed state. And the amount which we will mention from the Qur'an on how Allah Ta'ala spoke of futuwa, being, you, being young, youth. Allah Ta'ala speaks about it in various places and gives the examples of the Prophets. That young people, it's from, it's, it's from the youth that Allah Ta'ala nurtures piety. And Allah Ta'ala grows within them good qualities, develops within them good morality. Now in the, in the, in the modern day uh, you know, sciences, the psychologists generally, when they speak about childhood and in, in the age of youth, they say it's very important. And some, some of the psychologists to the degree even say that there's nothing within adulthood except that it has a link to one's childhood. How a person was raised, how a person was treated, how they started to learn about themselves in life, it always has a link. The ulama of Islam has spoken years ago about the importance of childhood and the importance of upbringing the, the children and the youth upon goodness. And that this is the age. If not this age, then that child may not develop a good framework of morality, may not develop a close connection to their worship. So it's a very important age and a very important stage, which is somehow, you know, unfortunately, sometimes we think, well, the person's young, they still have to learn. And this statement is very dangerous. Why? Because this statement pushes us to, to allow this child or this young person to not learn until they reach the age that they can no longer learn. Right? So this age is very important. Ibn Jawzi rahimahullah says, a child by the age of four to five years old is now starting to recognize, identify right from wrong, good from evil. And that, this is the age of istithmaru dhihni sabi. This is the age by which we have to invest within the mind of the child. Invest within that mind, to teach that mind, so that mind can develop. And so Allah Ta'ala speaks about the youth within the Qur'an. The story of the people of the cave is very famous, it's known to us. In which Allah Ta'ala uses the word fitya, that they are young people, right? And they brought piety, iman within themselves. They brought piety and iman within themselves. The idea that a young person or a child cannot be pious, this is not a part of our deen. Our ulama and pious predecessors of the past recognized that a child can envelope taqwa, piety within themselves. This is why a child even before reaching the age of 14, 15 by which they are within the Islamic legal system required to perform certain obligations, even before that age you are supposed to teach them salah. Even before that age you are supposed to teach them Quran. Imam Ghazali rahimahullah mentions that when teaching the child, first get them to memorize. Teach them to memorize Quran, teach them to memorize the deen. And so then when their mind will start to vast, it will start to become more vast, then they will slowly from that repository of their memory, of what they have memorized, they will start to now gain meaning. Right? So the child will embed within his or her memory something. And then they will use that memory to select meaning that they will use to understand the world throughout their life. So maybe that will be Qur'an if you give them the chance to memorize it. Or maybe then it will be something else which they are taught. 
one of the scholars of the past Imam Muhasibi rahimahullah his name was Muhasibi because he was very fond of the concept of taking self self accounting that to take time out of your day to sit down and to self assess your assess yourself so one time one of his students came to him he said that oh my teacher I've seen you here for the past hours what have you been doing he says I was assessing the past 20 years of my life what have I done so when he was it's narrated that when he was a child he went outside and he saw a group of children playing and then an older person came this elderly person came and he told this child why don't you take some dates today I sold a lot of dates to a person and when they were buying the dates much of the dates fell to the ground and they didn't take it so these are some of those dates this child al muhasibi rahimahullah walked away to the children and he said that is this person a Muslim is this person who's offering dates, is he even a Muslim? So this elderly person became very angry. Right? That how is this young child saying to me such words? So then the, he follows Imam Muhasibi who's a child. He comes to him and he says, ask him, why did you say this statement? Why are you questioning my Islam? He said, a Muslim never cheats. These dates which belong to that person who he left them here, he was supposed to take them with him. You should have went after him. And if you had to search the whole town to find him, you should have went and returned the trust to him. Returned his property to him. And now you're trying to feed the children haram. You're, you're trying to feed the children impure, impurities. So this, this child, right, in this state, another story is mentioned about Al-Junaid rahimahullah. That once he was in the classroom, and his teacher asked all of his students, right, and our Muslim, the parents of the past, they were, Imam Shafi rahimahullah is an example. His mother took him to a madrasa within the village at the age of two. Take my child, teach him Arabic to the clan of Hudayl, right? And the importance of Arabic, he was a master of the Arabic sciences, was embedded within him from the age of two. So the parents of the past, they recognized this, that children from a young age have to be given this environment. Junaid rahimahullah, his mother used to drop him at the age of five and six to a madrasa. Junaid rahimahullah, at the age of seven, his teachers asking the class that what is the true definition of shukr? What does it mean to be thankful to Allah? So his teacher asks everyone, everyone is giving their own definition, they're trying, some don't give a definition. Then Junaid rahimahullah says very profoundly that shukr is that everything we are given by Allah, which is my body and my limbs, my time, my breath, it be used in the obedience and not the disobedience of Allah. This is a child at the age of seven. This is a very known uh, reported story about him uh, at the age of seven. And his teacher said this child will be a very special person. This child will be a very special person. If you look at the stories of the scholars or of the pious people of the past, their tarbiyah, their upbringing of how they became pious didn't happen when they became elderly necessarily, right? It most of the time happened since childhood and even before childhood, even when they were in the state of the womb. That the parents cared about this, that the atmosphere that they be given, that how these children will develop, how will they gain, how will the youth gain qualities and, and, and morality and gain and learn the deen. Allah Ta'ala speaks about the Prophets and the Prophets are the same. Isa alayhi salatu was salam, in childhood, right, he's speaking about the deen. He's speaking about the deen of Allah, he's speaking about abstinence. In childhood, Yahya alayhi salatu was salam, his companion who's senior to him, at the age of seven, it's also narrated by Ibn Kathir rahimahullah, that he was going past a group of children and the children were playing. And an adult comes to him and says, why don't you go play with the children? Which is, it's obviously important for children that they play, they have recreational activity. But what does he say? What does he say? He says that this is not our character. We don't play, right? We take our time seriously. This is a child speaking, right? The point of mentioning this is that children can learn wisdom, children can have knowledge, and children can have depth within themselves. 
Allah Ta'ala gives hikmah and wisdom to who He wishes. The greatest trials came to some of the Prophets when they were young. Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam tested very greatly. And what is his response to, to test and to trial? Ma'ad Allah, I seek the protection of Allah. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam in Surah Maryam, when Allah Ta'ala speaks about Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, then he, speaks, he first speaks about Yahya alayhi salatu wasalam. Then he speaks about Isa, who's an even greater miracle than Yahya alayhi salatu wasalam. That Yahya was pious and righteous when he was just seven or eight. Isa alayhi salatu wasalam is pious from the cradle. Then after Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, Allah Ta'ala speaks about Ibrahim. But Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam is very different. He doesn't have a pious mother like Maryam alayhi salam. He is not from a noble family, the Ali Imran. He's not from a noble family. Right? His father builds idols with his own hands. But why speak about Ibrahim after them? To tell us of even a greater miracle. That this young person, even when not being brought up in a pious household, but rather a household of shirk, Allah Ta'ala blessed that child with Iman, that young person with Iman. And then what happened? That mu'min, that young believer is willing to fight the whole town for the sake of what he believes in. For the sake of what he believes in. This is why Allah Ta'ala mentions the young person who's, who grows in the worship of Allah. Why? Because when a young person grows in the worship of Allah Ta'ala, what will happen? They don't only benefit themselves, they stand up for the deen. They stand up for what they believe in. They have the strength and the courage to do this. So not only do they, do they change themselves, they change their town, they change their people, they change their friend circles. Right? There's a story mentioned of the Ashab al ukhdud in, in, in the Quran. Hmm? That there were, there were a people of a town, they were also idol worshippers, fire worshippers. There was a young person who was selected by he was selected by a sihr, something, you know, nowadays knowledge is, if you know technology, you're a smart person. At that time, if you knew magic, you were a smart person. So the king used to send this young person, go learn magic from this magician. He would go. On the way, he found that there was a monk, a, a, a pious worshipper who worshipped Allah and His oneness, who lived in the middle of that town. Right, whenever he would go to the magician, he would pass by him. He started to spend time with him and to learn from him. Right, I'm summarizing the story. He started to learn from him and spend time with him. After some time, he started to believe in what this monk had started to teach him. After some time, Allah Ta'ala sent a beast, a great dragon, some sort of beast to this town. And the town was now in a, in, a, in a state of trial, a state of test. So this young boy who was supposed to learn magic was now called that use your power, use your magic to go and protect the town, protect the people of the town. So this young person goes, he goes to the beast and he says that that this is now the time I can see the reality of the monk and the reality of the magic. What's more true, the belief which the monk has taught me or the strategies which the magician has taught me. So he says, Oh Allah, if what, I, if what the monk has taught me is true, if what I am believing in is true, then show me by executing and finishing off this, this trial and this test. And so when he says this, this dragon or this beast, whatever it is, it dies. After some time, the, the king obviously questions, how did you do this? He says, I did this by my belief in Allah Ta'ala and His oneness. I sought, the, I sought the help of the only one, the creator. So the king says to him, there's no creator besides me. There's no king besides me. So they start to try, they try to murder him. One time they take him on the mountain and they try to throw him. One time they, they, they try to drown him. In other ways, every single time they fail. They're, they're, they're un incapable of killing him. They're incapable of finishing him. So this young person says to the king, that I will tell you of one way that you can get rid of me. That you won't have to worry about me. That I won't call your people to the oneness of Allah. I won't tell people who is the true king. So he says to that king that you can kill me, but you have to say one statement. That before you try to shoot me with an arrow or however you want to hang me, that you say in the name of the Lord of this young boy. Bismi Rabbi Hadha al -ghulam. In the name of the Lord of this young boy. So he gathered and gathered the people of the town. 
So the king gathers the people of the town and then he places the, the young boy and then he out, out in a loud manner he says this statement and that young boy is he's murdered he, he's, his life is taken now what happens after this all of the people of the town hear what this young boy has given his life for this statement they recognize the power of this statement the recognition of the true creator recognition of the true Rabb, the true sustainer and they all believe in Allah and what happens then that king of a town builds a trench this is where the name of the Ashab al ukhdud comes from he builds these trenches and ditches and he says every person who believes and will not disbelieve in what this young boy believes in will not bring iman in me they will be they will be killed and then they are all one by one they give their life why for the power of tawheed because what they believe in of in tawheed if you look at the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, their examples are the same. Who were the first helpers of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa They were the youth, most of them, many of them, Ali radiallahu anhum, in a very young age accepted Islam. Huh? Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas, Musa ibn Umayr radiallahu anhum. And their sacrifice is great. Their sacrifice is phenomenal. Musa ibn Umayr radiallahu anhum, his story always stands out, how beautiful it is. That he was so wealthy and he gave his wealth for the, so much so that he sacrificed his wealth that his mother deprived him of anything that his father owned. So much so that when they were in Medina Munawwara, he, Saad, uh, Musa ibn Umayr radiallahu anhum, enters the masjid. He passes by with one cloth that he owns, the only one cloth. That cloth is also patched. There was a time when he used to pass by the towns and the girls of the city would come out to, to smell his fragrance. Right? This was Musa ibn Umayy. Now he's entering Medina Munawwara. The, the companions are sitting with the Messenger of Allah And they look at him and they shy away and they look down. The Prophet Sallallahu he looks at him and what, he starts to cry. He starts to cry that this, there was a person of ni'mah, of great blessing. And now Allah Ta'ala is starting to test him. Even the Messenger of Allah felt the condition of Musa ibn Umayr And when this, when this companion, he traveled, to, he traveled to Abyssinia After he was being tortured in Makkah Mukarramah He traveled to Abyssinia When he came back to Makkah Mukarramah He started to learn again from the Prophet Wasallam. And his mother again told him that you could not live in this house Unless you defy what you believe in Unless you negate what you believe in he said, Oh mother, right? and this is the reason the ayat of Surah Luqman were, uh, uh, they were revealed that no matter what, respect your parents. Wasahibhuma fi dunya marufa. That always respect them. Musab ibn Umayr. Unfortunately, uh, as a, you know, young people in Islam, as Muslim, they can't even respect their parents. This person, Musab ibn Umayr, is respecting and honoring his mother even when she's fighting him. Even when she's fighting him. There's no room for disrespecting the elders or the parents. However, when it comes to disobeying Allah, at that point the believer stops. They, they withhold from that. Respectfully. He tells his mother respectfully, I cannot leave what I've, I've, I've brought belief in. So the, his mother tells him, you will have to leave this household. He says, in a very profound and beautiful statement, he says that, Oh my mother, I cannot, I cannot negate your ihsan, your favor over me. Allah Ta'ala took me from your womb into this dunya because of you. But now Allah has blessed me with someone even greater, who He took me out from darkness into light. The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This was the wisdom which how the young person dealt with his elders. Why? Because they, they learned, they had knowledge, they had wisdom. When Musa ibn Umayr came to Medina Munawwara, and he was the first khatib of Islam. Before the Prophet ﷺ even gave khutbah, he was commanded that you give the Jummah and withhold and uphold the Jummah in Medina Munawwara. He went to Medina Munawwara, he was upholding the, the, the establishing the Jummah in the household of Asad ibn Zurara. Now, one of the leaders, Usayd ibn Hudayr, found out that he's here. So, so he, he came with a spear. He said, who is this person coming and trying to teach the people of Medina Munawwara? 
Now, unfortunately, when a young person is, what, a, a, a young man will believe that my courage is to what? Show my anger, show I have strength, so fight back. What does Musab ibn Umayr do? He kindly says to this person that you are the honorable leader of this land. If you tell me to leave, I will leave. But if you can just stay and just kindly listen to what I have to say. If you think it's okay, I'll stay. If you don't think so, I'll leave right away. So Usaid bin Hudayr, he stays. He listens. He came with a spear and he leaves with Iman. He left that gathering believing in Allah Ta'ala and the, and the, the Messenger After some time, one of the second and third leaders brought Iman because of this young Khatib. After, after that, because the leaders bring Iman, now so many of the followers and Allah Ta'ala is preparing Medina Munawwara for the Prophet through this young person. Through this young person. This was how, how did this happen? When the Messenger of Allah attached the young people to the masjid. He came to Medina Munawwara, he built the masjid, and all of the young people were attached to the gatherings of learning and teaching in Medina Munawwara. This was what the young people did. Right? There's, there's a famous narration, and I'll conclude shortly, that Abu Hurairah anhu was leaving to the market. He went to the market and he told the people. He told the people that, indeed, verily, the inheritance of the Messenger of Allah is being distributed. He told a group of young people. These young people, they come to the, the masjid and they don't see any wealth. They start to question, Oh Abu Huraira, you called us, you're wasting our time. He said, Wayhakum. That woe to you. Don't you see these gatherings of dhikr? Don't you see these gatherings of learning and teaching? This was what the young people valued at that time. We spoke about knowledge last week, right? We spoke about the, the statement of Ali radiallahu anhu, which is what? That we are pleased. Radina qismat al jabbari fina. We are pleased with what Allah has given us. He's given us knowledge. And He's given the ignorant people wealth. We don't care about wealth. Right? The young people surrounding the Messenger of Allah, like Musab ibn Umayr, when they realized the things and the standards and the cultures of society don't don't mean anything, but the value of my belief is much more weighty, then believe me my brothers and sisters, they will give up everything for their deen. But unfortunately what happens? We lower our standards. What do we tell the, 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 the young girl? If you're having a hard time with hijab, don't wear the hijab. We lower our standards. If you're having a hard time finding halal food, just say Bismillah and eat. We lower our standards. And that's exactly what it's, what's against the meaning of being an American. What does it mean to be an American? That you stand up for what you believe in. That you believe in your faith, you stand up for it, you follow it, you're given the freedom and the right to do so. But we unfortunately lower our standard. An example I give to some of my friends, that the vegans, the people who don't even eat meat, they fought for their rights and look how many restaurants are there now. We couldn't fight for halal. We couldn't stand up for halal food. We're willing to give up our rights. So Muslims and young people need to know and need to learn by through the value of their deen that they can stand up for what they believe in. And by point of speaking about this today, my brothers and sisters, is that inshallah ta'ala, we are going to be starting a halaqa for the youth in this masjid. And it will be a weekly or a bi-weekly program. The first program will be tomorrow inshallah. What do, what do we want? The, the, the goal is very simple. It's a very simple goal. That all of the young people attach themselves to the masjid, the, the masjid become such a central point within their life that they cannot believe in a life without the masjid. They cannot believe in a life that their nikah is not taking in the masjid, janazas are not taking in the masjid, mashwara and, and learning and teaching and gaining guidance is not taking in the masjid. Everything is taking in the masjid. Attaching them to the masjid where their iman will be safeguarded, where their iman will be protected. So I urge every, all of my respected elders and all of the, the young people within this gathering that spread the word. We want all of the young people of the Pembroke Pines area that they come tomorrow at 2 p.m. Pray Zuhr Salah with us, and inshallah, and join the program. All of the young boys of our community.
الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمد عبده ورسوله عباد الله ان الله قد امركم بامر بدا فيه بنفسه وثنى به الملائكه المسبحه بقدسه وثلث بكم ايها المؤمنون حيث قال ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد بعدد من صلى وصام اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد بعدد من قعد وقام وصل على جميع الانبياء والمرسلين وعلى الملائكه المقربين وعلى عباد الله الصالحين برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر الاسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصرهم في كل مكان يا رب العالمين اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اللهم اشفهم ش... اللهم اشفهم شفاء كاملا عاجلا يا ارحم الراحمين عباد الله ان الله يأمر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون ولذكر الله تعالى اكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون اقيم الصلاه